So I can't say I've reviewed that many Cambridge Audio components over the years, but it seems like every time I do, I'm reminded how, how good they are and how they have a different, different kind of approach than most, uh, let's say, I don't, I don't want to use the word mid-fi because they're way above mid-fi, but, you know, not crazy high-end and not budget-oriented companies. They're more like, we're going to make really good stuff, but we're not going to, like, make you take out your wallet and empty it completely kind of company, you know. They're very British that way, I guess. They're a little understated, minimalist, you, you could even say. Like this amplifier, the CX, now in its Series 2 versions, the CX-A81 Stereo Integrated Amplifier. Well, it's, it's an 80 watt per channel amp, 80 watts into 8 ohms, and 120 watts into 4 ohms. Um, what else? Oh, it's a Class AB amplifier. Not something you see every day anymore. Those are getting a little rare. Um, but this one is definitely AB, not Class D. And it has a big honking uh, power transformer right in the middle of the chassis there. Weighs 19 pounds. It feels really solid for an 80 watt per channel amplifier. Uh, let's see. Oh, before I go any further, I should... Oh, the price. I don't want to forget the price. It is $1,299. So it has four uh, inputs. One of them is an XLR balanced input, and it has stereo preamplifier outputs. You can, if you need more power down the road than 80 watts, take those pre outs, hook them up to a big amp, and you'll be rocking and rolling. It has a subwoofer output, not always seen on stereo integrated amps, so I'm happy to see it there. What's not there? Well, a few things. First of all, no phono preamp. And before I hear you going, oh, no. You know, I think phono preamps built into most integrated amps in this price class, um, or receivers for that matter, they're pretty marginal. They're okay, but nothing special. So that the fact there isn't one in there, <laughs> not an issue for me. Spring for the $129 shit manny. Phono preamp does moving magnet and moving coil. You won't see too many moving coil inputs on integrated amps in this price range or receivers, etc. Shit Manny is the way to go for you vinyl people. Other things that are missing that I do wish were there were bass and treble controls. I like tone controls and I wish they were there, um, but they're not. Uh, let's see what else isn't there. A display. There's no actual, you know, readout display. There's indications of what input you're on, but that's pretty much it. The front panel has a volume control and buttons to select inputs, and you're done. Oh, there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Why? Why can't it have a 6.3 millimeter headphone jack, a normal full-size headphone jack? I, I don't get the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on a serious component like this. I can't say Cambridge is the only company that's done that, but I find it annoying actually uh, other well a minor annoyance is when you're using the the remote uh, the volume ramp up ramp down is a little too speedy for me it's like I'm always overshooting and I'm always it's too loud no it's too soft no it's too loud I, it's it's I'm, I'm fussy about that kind of stuff and that and that really does annoy me but you know when you live with it and you use it all the time you can get used to controlling the speed a little better I'm just passing through with this product right so if I live with it, I'm sure I'd get used to the ramp up, ramp down speeds. Oh, and oh, I forgot to mention, it has, uh, in terms of digital connections, it has four uh, analog connections, but in terms of digital, it has a USB input. Again, not something that's always there on products like this. It has one coax and two optical inputs. I don't know, uh, one feature that I know people do do like and are looking for is a, a AB speaker output. So you can hook up two sets of speakers, you know, a main set of speakers and speakers maybe in another room. That's cool. That is a useful feature that people really like. So I am glad to see them there. I use three sets of speakers. Three, count them three. Three sets of speakers in this review. I use the Polk Legend L200 bookshelf speakers and I, that I just reviewed and I'll link to that directly below. I use the venerable, uh, much loved, <laughs> much loved, much loved Kef LS50s. And to put the uh, little pressure on the amp, I also use the Magnapan LRS, which is a power hungry 
very demanding uh, planar magnetic panel speaker. So I used those three speakers over the course of this review. Now, I found the sound to be, I'm just going to cut right to the chase. This isn't a warm and soft sounding amplifier, not at all. It's actually on the cool, slightly cool side of neutral. Um, but the sound stage is huge. Uh, bass is really tight and fast. Play uncompressed music like the uh, Dick Hyman Swing record, which is a big band record. Well, really well recorded, incredibly well recorded album. Uncompressed, un-EQ'd, and I ran that through the 81 and it just lit up. Uh, you know, I spent the most time with the uh, LS50s hooked up. And I know those speakers so well, but every time I play them on a different amplifier, they sound completely different. They don't really have a personality of their own, which is one of the reasons why they're useful in the context of doing reviews. So um, they just had more life, more live sound that I like. I, I'm always looking for that feeling that this is really happening now kind of sound. And it, it did that incredibly well, especially on this uh, Dick Hyman album. Because the Dick Hyman record is an audio file recording. There's no processing, there's no compression, there's no auto-tune. It's just like here is this huge band and uh, they, they're rocking out, man, they're having fun. And, I, and that was fully communicated by the 81. So as things were moving along in the process of doing this review, at one point I, I turned to my side and what did I see? I saw a shit Bifrost multi-bit DAC digital converter. And I thought, well, let me see how that compares to the built-in converter in the 81. So I hooked it up, and uh, I was actually using an Oppo uh, BDP-205 Blu-ray player as a transport. And I hooked it up, and the Bifrost sweetened the sound, um, was a little more relaxed, a little less on edge. That's not the right word, but it was it, it scaled back the presentation in terms of that live jump factor and just added an ease that I liked a lot. Now I think this the sound of the built-in converter and I will list all of its specs and stuff directly below. But the, the sound of the built-in the built-in converter is good, but I want I personally want sweeter. Now if that's me. You may want like I want. And believe me, I have these conversations with audiophiles all the time when I meet them. Some people want more that snap, that detail. I just met a guy on the street last night who was telling me this. And he was saying, no, no, he actually didn't like the, um, the RP600M. He thought it was too laid back, see? And a lot of people would say it's, it's got a little too much aggression in there. And he said, no, I thought it was too laid back. So everybody's looking for different things. Some of the, the new music I was listening to was from Lucretia Dalt. She does an ambient um, electronica, but, but there's this edge to it that I really like. It has, it's a metallic kind of clanging sound. It's electric, it's charged, that's what it is. It's got this pulsing energy that runs through it, um, but it's not like you're over the head kind of crazy stuff. No, but it's, there's something going on that I really like. And I was deep into it over the LS50s. I switched over to the LRS, the, the MagnaPans. The MagnaPans are just, they, they, they don't click with this amplifier. It, it's a little too um, anemic <laughs> sounding. That, that pairing just needed more juice, more warmth. Even with the Bifrost in there, it wasn't really happening for me. So it's close, but mm, no cigar. The, the Polk Legend 200, mm, perfecto, really, really good, because that's sort of a warmish sounding speaker. So again, we get into that speaker amp pairing since the L200 is on the warm side of neutral, you pair it with a slightly cool amp and you wind up right in the middle. But yet, for some reason, I kept going back to the LS50. That's the one I know the longest of these three speakers, so I guess where I felt comfortable evaluating the sound. To sum up, so summing up, I think the 81 is a very, very competent design, very thoughtful, uh, nice balance of features, not too much, not too little, just right. Um, it has, like I said, an audiophile appeal, especially for audiophiles looking for um, a veer towards 
high resolution being their top priority. I think it does that extremely well. Uh, and I think that's it. My work here is now complete. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, which has a habit of coming up daily, although I am scaling back to five or six times a week. I will be over the coming weeks and months. Um, but as always, I appreciate you guys being out there. It's fantastic when I meet you, like I met this guy Jack the other day on the street. It's so cool. We had a nice conversation. Um, if you dig what I'm doing, please subscribe. Hit that button down there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. Uh, I will be at the Capital Audio Fest uh, in Washington, D.C. Yeah, I guess Capital Audio Fest, Washington. I've never been there before. It'll be my first time. That's November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So if you're in the vicinity, drop by, say hi. And uh, what else? Uh, check out my playlist for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews and blah, 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 blah. And I just want to say once again, thank you so much for watching. See you again real soon.